there is a lot going on today. Now, obviously, the new Adele album drops at midnight, which means you're about to be able to tell who's going through a breakup through your walls. The judge in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial took a bathroom break and let Kyle be the judge while he was gone. Yeah, which I've never seen before, but he insists it's totally normal. And two men who were framed for the killing of Malcolm X 50 years ago were finally exonerated, which means the real killer could be anyone in this room. But while American news is always breaking, it's also good to remember that other countries have news too. All right, let's kick things off with Russia, the fictional country depicted in Creed II. They're also the real life country that likes invading other countries. And now they might be back on their bullshit. Overseas tonight and the growing concern involving Russia, the U.S. is warning Russia may be weighing a potential invasion of Ukraine. Satellite images tonight showing Russian troops and equipment gathering about 142 miles north of the border with Ukraine. Despite an estimated 100,000 Russian troops gathering along their border, Ukrainian forces appear confident and prepared for battle. After years of pushing for membership, the Eastern European country is still not a part of NATO, meaning they don't have treaty protection if Russia invades. Although this hasn't stopped the Americans, British, and French from offering statements of support. We are going to uh, watch very closely uh, as the Russian Federation um, uh, chooses its actions in the coming days and weeks. Yeah, that's what I want from my allies is for them to watch very closely as someone whips my ass. Guys, guys, I'm getting attacked! I'm getting attacked! Don't worry, man, we watching them land every punch! Yo, Donnell, you recording, right? Yeah, we got you, boy, we got you! We see them beating your ass! If you're Ukraine, this situation sucks, man, because Russia are the bad guys, right? But it doesn't seem like the world is willing to get into a war to protect Ukraine. And can I be honest? Can I be honest with you? I think it's because people don't have a personal connection to Ukraine. Like, if Russia was invading Italy, or France, well, people would do something about it. Oh no, the art, the Colosseum, we have to protect it. Like if I was Ukraine, I would have bought the worldwide rights to all the Seinfeld reruns, then people would care. If you don't protect us from Russia, you will never again see Kramer open door like crazy. Also, this is genius timing from Russia, right? You realize it's not a mistake because anyone who knows history knows you're not gonna send troops into Russia at the beginning of winter. So basically Russia has like what? five months to do whatever they want. Yeah, the rest of the world is gonna be standing by like, this will not stand, Russia. Your ass is gonna pay as, as soon as mid-April rolls around. It depends on what the groundhog says. And like, why does Russia even need more land? Have you seen Russia? It's huge. Why are you doing this? Like, I would get if Monaco wanted to invade another country. I mean, they're running out of closet space, but Russia? Now, while Russia is getting ready to invade, Another country in Europe is setting up a different kind of invasion because they're not using tanks or missiles. They're using immigrants. Turning out of the border crisis, this one playing out in Europe as thousands of migrants try to enter the European Union from Belarus. These are the front lines of what the European Union says is a hybrid war. The EU accusing Belarus's dictator Alexander Lukashenko of using migrants as weapons, purposefully luring them into Belarus from countries like Iraq and Syria by promising them easy access to Europe. Poland then refusing to let them in, Belarus refusing to take them back, leaving thousands of people stuck in the middle. Man, come on, people, this is just dirty. Basically, what's going on is that for a while now, the European Union has been imposing sanctions on Alexander Lukashenko, the dictator of Belarus and Eastern Europe's My Pillow guy. And you see, he's been stealing elections, he's been cracking down on protesters, jailing journalists, basic dictator shit. And now Lukashenko is trying to get back at the European Union by flying in migrants from the Middle East and then sending them into Poland to create a border crisis, which is the most passive aggressive military tactic I have ever heard of. This is like when your parents start cooking with peanuts to get you to move out of the house because they know you're allergic. It's a dick move. And obviously everyone is really mad about this, not just because it's inhumane to these migrants, but because unlike Ukraine, we can't let anything happen to Poland. I mean, that's where all our water comes from. Because you realize people, this is especially cruel. Right? It's especially cruel to these migrants. These are real people who are just trying to live better lives. 
It is disgusting to use them as weapons. I mean, say what you want about Drake and Kanye's beef, but at least they didn't catapult Mexicans at each other. But let's move on. Because while Belarus is trying to destabilize Poland, there's another country that's already on the brink of collapse. Ethiopia, where a brutal year-long conflict has forced millions out of their homeland and is threatening to disintegrate into an all-out civil war. Rebels from Tigray province appear to be advancing toward the capital, Addis Ababa. Ethiopia's prime minister called for national unity, and authorities in Addis Ababa rounded up ethnic Tigrayans today. Two weeks ago, the State Department urged all Americans to leave Ethiopia. But with echoes of Afghanistan, the State Department doesn't know or won't say how many Americans are in the country. Last week, the State Department did make a point of saying there would be no Afghan-style evacuation for Americans stuck in Ethiopia. They did, however, offer to help them get on commercial flights out. Yeah, this is tough news for Ethiopians, and this is tough news for Americans in Ethiopia. Because in Afghanistan, the U.S. government staged an all-out airlift. Meanwhile, in Ethiopia, they're like, might we suggest Priceline.com? Like, I don't even know what that means. What do they mean when they say the State Department will help you book a commercial flight out? That's not helpful. People know how to book flights. That's like going, hey, hey, you, do you need a ride? Do you need a ride? Yeah, well, I'm happy to help. So what you gotta do is open Uber on your phone, then you hit request a ride. Best of luck, buddy. Also, flying commercial is the worst way to evacuate a war zone. Can you imagine that stress? Please, please, the soldiers, the soldiers are coming. We need to get out now. Sir, are you a diamond medallion member? Okay, please step aside. Anyone in group A or above, we're boarding you now. Sir, please, please stand back. Just relax, thank you. And you know who this is a great opportunity for, though, right? Alexander Lukashenko. Yeah, I bet he's already sliding into American DMs like, I can hook you up with a free private flights to the Polish border. Are you interested? But you gotta feel for Ethiopians, man, because anytime their country's in the news, it is either because of war or famine or some long-distance runner broke the world record, which are all pretty extreme things if you think about it. I feel like we need more coverage of just, like, regular-ass Ethiopians, you know, who can't run, don't know how to fight, and just want to chill. And please understand this. Please understand. This is a really complicated and sensitive story, right? Because for, for about a year now, the government has been at war with a rebel group. But that's, like, the simplified version, because there are so many layers of this conflict that we just don't have the time to do it justice. This is a huge beef with a history that goes back decades involving rival ethnic groups, different territories, foreign interference, because African conflicts are never simple. They're super complicated, and everyone has different versions of events. They're, they're, they're basically like white people conflict, but with more seasoning. So from Russia's military to migrants in Belarus, and armies in Ethiopia, people everywhere are on the move. Meanwhile, in India, the only place people might be moving to is back inside. Smothered by smog, a toxic haze hanging over New Delhi, and it is raising the level of air pollution to dangerous levels. Schools in the Indian capital have shut their doors until further notice, and private construction banned, at least for now. India's Environmental Ministry panel on air pollution has directed Delhi and other states to encourage private offices to allow work from home. But for street vendors, staying home is not an option. The pollution is unbearable. The government must take some steps. We are forced to work because we can't stay indoors forever. For now, Delhi's residents will be inhaling this toxic air which, according to a report by the University of Chicago, is 10 times worse in northern India than anywhere else in the world. God damn, did you hear that? The air in New Delhi right now is 10 times worse than anywhere else in the world. That means you'd be better off just sticking your face in that steam that comes out of the ground in New York City. Which, by the way, what is that shit? Like, is there a fire down there? I've lived here for many years. I still don't understand what that is. It's like someone dry cleaning a rat? What, what? I feel like it's worth looking into. No one? Just me? You know, one detail I like from the story is that the Indian government put together an environmental ministry panel on air pollution who confirmed that the air was indeed polluted. Uh, you don't need a panel. I don't know why they did that. Why do governments like doing this? You just need eyes. Yes, after three years of study, we have concluded that Delhi's air is brown and that this is, uh, bad. But you see, this is a great example of why we all need to move to cleaner energy. 
Because yes, it is expensive to do, but it is also hella expensive to constantly shut down the economy when your city turns into a sandstorm from Dune. Except this time, Timothy Chalamet isn't there to make you feel better with that smile. And you might be like, well, Trevor, why don't they just start carpooling in India? My man, they're way ahead of you and it's still not enough. It's actually a real rough spot for India because as a nation, you want to keep modernizing. You want to keep growing, but then the fallout of those effects make it so that you can't even enjoy the fruits of modernization. You know, it's almost like someone who gets really into CrossFit to help them attract women, but then they push everyone away because they can't stop talking about the fact that they joined CrossFit. Now, those ads are useless. And you wouldn't be able to tell this from the story, but New Delhi is one of the most beautiful places in the world. I mean, this is what it looked like last year after months of lockdown and the smog dissipating. But now, it's back to looking like it's stuck on a permanent sepia filter. All right, but let's move on to our final international story. And like most things in the world, this story was made in China. The royalty of professional tennis expressing concern about the welfare of one of their own. Honestly, it's shocking, you know, that, that she's missing. Peng Chui, a Chinese tennis champion, hasn't been seen or heard from in weeks. In early November, Peng published this bombshell post on her Chinese social media account. An open letter to a former top communist leader named Zhang Gaoli, now aged 75, who Peng accuses of sexually assaulting her after the two had an affair. Shortly after the controversial post, Peng's online profile more or less disappeared. Until recently, Peng Shui was one of the biggest tennis stars in China. But look what happens when you try to search for people with her name in the Chinese internet. You get the message, no results found. Censors have all but scrubbed this woman from the Chinese internet. Now today, a new twist. With Chinese state media releasing this email purportedly written by Peng to the head of the Women's Tennis Association. It completely disavows the previous allegations of sexual assault, adding, I'm not missing, nor am I unsafe, and I hope Chinese tennis will become better and better. Yo, this is really disturbing. Someone speaks out about sexual assault, and then China's government just makes them disappear? And then what's even worse is that they release some bullshit email pretending like everything is fine? Because come on, people. That email from the tennis star was as legit as the letters I got from my supermodel girlfriend in fifth grade. She's coming next year, guys, I swear. This is what makes China so terrifying. Like, if you're on their good side, well, things are great. But if you try to tell the truth about how China is a country that constantly oppresses... Trevor Noah, she do jiala. Woman do ta yichie sun li. What the hell was that? I'm not even in China. Look, man, it's one thing for your government to come after you. It's another thing for them to just make you never exist. I mean, they scrubbed the internet of anything about this tennis player. Do you know how hard it is to get stuff off of the internet? Only China can do that. In fact, if you have embarrassing pictures online or problematic tweets, just move to China and talk shit about the Communist Party. Yeah, they'll clean up your reputation in no time. I mean, yeah, you'll be locked in a basement somewhere, but hey, at least you didn't get canceled. And this also really puts into perspective when people in America complain about being censored by big tech. Oh, Twitter took down my tweet. This is a tyranny. Guys, Peng Shui literally does not exist on the internet anymore. Like, yeah, maybe Trump can't tweet right now, but you can still Google him. Trust me, just yesterday I searched for Donald Trump big butt photos. I got 80 million hits. And no, I'm not gonna tell you why I Googled that. I like big butts and I cannot lie. 